Hi, welcome to this video podcast. In this video podcast, we'll be taking a look at the use cases for VPlex. My name is Ashish Palekar. I lead the VPlex product management team. So what are the use cases that are working for VPlex and its customers? Really, it's, it's three. Mobility, availability, and collaboration. Let's take a look at each of those and how those translate into customer use cases. So mobility is really about moving applications as well as data. So the simplest case for mobility is you have a VPlex cluster, and sitting behind it is array A and another array B. And you want to refresh from array A to array B, right? So you bring, bring array B in, create a mirror from array A to array B, migrate from array A to array B, disconnect array A, and you've migrated to B. And oh, by the way, your applications have not taken any downtime. So non-disruptive technology refresh is the simplest form, really, of the mobility use case. But it goes beyond that. What VPlex allows you to do, because of its Access Anywhere technology, is really start to think about use cases across latencies, both synchronous as well as asynchronous. So you can now have an array C, and you can now migrate from two arrays across synchronous or asynchronous distances. But that's not enough. It's really about moving applications as well as your data from one side to another. And what do we mean by that? So let's say you have VMs that are running on site A. Right? These can be Oracle VMs, hypervisor VMs, VMware VMs, you now, because of VPlex, have the ability to non-disruptively, using things like vMotion, things like Live Migrate, non-disruptively from one side to another. And because of the Access Anywhere technology, that data is already available on that second side. Why is this so important? Why is this, why is this so spiffy and so cool? VPlex is really the first technology that allows you to seamlessly graph end-to-end -end your virtualization infrastructure, right, from your application to your storage and your network from one side to another. So you can almost graph your entire virtual infrastructure from one side to another. So what does this mean for our customers from a practical perspective? You can do things like disaster avoidance. Right? So I have an oncoming hurricane, or even a natural disaster, like power outages, network, network infrastructure changes. Without having to schedule downtime, I can now move my customers from one data center to another, keep my business online, take this data center out for some time, and then bring this data center back online. Right? I'm able to avoid a disaster and keep my business running. That's the value proposition behind disaster avoidance. You can also do workload balancing. Right? I have VMs and I have data that's running hot on one data center. I can balance them appropriately across the two data centers. So now they're not running as hot. I'm able to take the benefits of, of migrating across that second data center. I can do things like data center migration. So my entire VM's uh, operation virtual infrastructure is running on one side. I know I have to migrate from one side to another. Well, migrate my VMs non-disruptively shut everything down over here, and now have seamlessly migrated to that second data center. This also has important implications for the cloud use case. Right? So I can migrate from within my data center to a service provider in the cloud. I can flex to the cloud. I can look at the cloud service provider as, as a service. Right? So if I have to schedule for um, my average time, I can, I can load my data center up for my average load. And as I get those peak workloads, I can say, hey, I want that service from within the cloud, and vPlex can help get your applications and your data over there. That's how mobility works from a vPlex perspective. The second use case is around availability. Now, availability is a, um, is a concept of around how, how much you, uptime you can provide your customers. But really, there's two ways to think about it. If you think about traditional storage arrays, you're thinking about availability as an in-the-data-center kind of a concept. Right? So I, I'm, I'm giving my customers as high an uptime as possible within my data center. 
Well, VPEX really takes that to the next level. How does it do that? By providing access ac across two data centers, and this, it really takes the data center away as a single point of failure, right? So no longer I have to worry, worry about losing my one data center. I can now get continuous storage access from my second data center. The one thing that's important to note is this is primarily um, a synchronous use case. So it's really a VPlex Metro use case. And how does VPlex actually do this? So let's, let's walk through a couple of scenarios. Right. One of the things we've added uh, in, in just the recent release of VPlex is what we call the VPlex witness. For those of you that are familiar with clustering technology, think of this almost as the quorum. The witness is able to help VPlex distinguish between site failure and site partition. Right? So how does VPlex actually do this? The basic building block of VPlex is that it has what we call a site preference. Classic computer science problem. In a two cluster scenario, when one cluster dies, the remaining cluster doesn't know whether the other cluster died or the link between the two clusters went away. Right? So today, what VPlex does, if you, if you look at the deployments without the witness, what VPlex would do is it would look at that as, uh, look at the static preference. We choose a site that wins. And if it's, if it's the winning site that survives, your IOs go on. On the other hand, if it's not the winning site, then the IOs here would suspend. With the, v, with, with the VPlex witness, we are now able to override uh, that, that preference capability. So whether it's the preferred site or not, the witness is now able to figure out that if this site went away, VPlex is able to continue running IOs at the second site. How does this become useful to our customers? So let's, let's walk through the scenario from an end-to-end -end perspective. For the, for the case, for this particular case, let's look at VMware um, VMs as the use case, right? VMware has a product they call VMware HA. HA is, is able to automatically restart VMs within, today within a data center. With VPlex, we are now able to stretch HA across a data center, right? So just to make things clear, let's assume that we have the HA cluster stretched across the data center. So the scenario is, what happens in the case that VPlex fails and this data center fails? Right? In that scenario, VMware HA recognizes that this data center has gone, gone away. It now has ESX servers that are present in the second data center, but still part of the same HA cluster that are able to automatically restart the VMs. And by the way, because of the witness, VPlex is able to say, yes, I can now continue providing access over here. So what happens is the VMs automatically start appearing over here and continue running operation. Right? The same thing works with other stretch cluster technologies. So things like PowerHA, HP Service Guard, and Oracle Rack. Because of the, the Access Anywhere technology of VPlex, VPlex is now able to provide a higher level of availability to customers than has been possible before. We can take this one step further. So with Geosynchrony 5.0, VPlex up to limited latencies, say campus environments, really one milliseconds round trip time, VPlex is now allowing what we call the cross-connected configuration. So customers are now able to have their hosts up to one milliseconds round trip time connect their ESX or other clustering technologies across both VPlex clusters. In that scenario, you can lose an entire VPlex cluster, and the host would not know that, uh, that it, its storage was impacted, because it's able to continue working through that other cluster. So you don't have to take the impact of moving your applications and having them restart at the second site. That's availability with VPlex. All right, we covered the mobility and the availability use cases with VPlex. The third use case is around collaboration. And before jumping into the use case, let's cover the customer scenario. So the example is a financial trading company based out of Chicago. So they collect data from the Chicago Mercantile uh, during the day's trading operations. 
as the day's trading operations close, they now FTP their files from Chicago down to their uh, out office here in Boston, where the analysts are. Right? These are not small files. We are talking about hundreds of gigs of files that are moving from one side to another. The guys in Boston actually now take that file, run their analytics on it, and before the next day's trading, FTP those files all the way back to Chicago. So what are the problems with this process? Really three things. First, it's a manual, cumbersome process, right? Where someone has to FTP the files from one side to another, and oh, by the way, all the way back again. The second part is, who's keeping track of the consistency of that file, right? FTPs might fail, files might get corrupted, things are moving in flight, changes might happen in flight, who's keeping track of, that, of the file being consistent? And third, while the files are being FTP'd from one side to another, nobody's actually working on that data, right? So there, there is a, a downtime when that file is being moved from one place to another. Bplex can really make the solution a whole lot more elegant and, and beneficial to our customers. How? Because Bplex is able to present that same data from two different locations, you can now combine it with a clustered file system. And because you can combine it with a clustered file system, now the users can access it from different sites. So what, are the impact on that, uh, what is the impact of this on the customers? The process is no longer manual. Sure, the first time you're, you're, you'll have the entire data being copied from one site to another. But after that, you're shipping deltas. You're just shipping incremental changes. Working with the clustered file systems, Vplex is able to give a consistent view of data from both sides. And third, because the data is simultaneously accessible from both sides, there really isn't downtime. Right? So as soon as the guys in Chicago are done with their files, the guys in Boston can start processing that data. So you've, you've reduced the time it takes for that customer to actually process that data, a significant competitive advantage. And because you're shipping deltas from one side to another, you're even consuming less bandwidth going from one side to another. These, this use case is, is really a general pattern. So what do I mean by that? The classic pattern is that the producers and the consumers of data are not co-located. And Vplex, with its Access Anywhere technology, is able to bring those producers and consumers together by allowing them to view that same data. What are the examples of this use case? So we can look at seismic data. You have oil and gas companies who are producing tons of seismic data. This seismic data needs to be analyzed as quickly as possible so that these oil and gas companies can predict where their next big oil or natural gas find is going to be. So Vplex can provide that simultaneous access, near simultaneous access from two different locations. High performance computing. So you have large volumes of satellite data, large volumes of analytical data that needs to, that is produced at one location, but really the analysis for it is being done at different location. Again, Vplex is a fit for those, uh, those use cases. A third example of this, media, right? You have large media files that are being produced in one location, edited in another, and collaborated over distance. Again, something to think about from a Vplex perspective. The common trait, as you think about all these three use cases, mobility, availability, and collaboration, is that because of Vplex's Access Anywhere technology, Vplex can provide simultaneous read-write, active-active access over distance. That's the secret sauce that makes mobility, availability, and collaboration work. Hope this was useful. Thank you very much.